One of the NBA's most ruthless trades in recent memory just absolutely ruined the Minnesota Timberwolves while the New York Knicks have officially taken as big a risk as you can possibly take. That is the rapid reaction of the Knicks trading Julius Randle and Dante DiVincenzo away for Carl Anthony Towns, a trade that has sparked headlines and a trade that to many has created some confusion. Some believe that New York broke up the Nova Knicks too early and that the Knicks are better betting on the wrong superstar. Meanwhile, for the Timberwolves, Cat was either just the second or third most important player in their run to the Western Conference Finals. He was also their franchise star for about a decade and was ruthlessly, with almost no warning, shipped to New York as Minnesota believes in the combination of Julius Randle and Dante DiVincenzo over Towns. So what are both of these teams thinking? Well, let's find out by diving into the Knicks and Timberwolves thought processes. So what What's up, Mike here, and beginning with the New York Knicks. We know that for the past several off seasons, New York has been trying to pull in a big superstar. The Knicks have been linked to Damian Lillard, they've been linked to Joel Embiid, they've been linked to many players, but they were never able to make anything work. Now though, after already making a huge move and bringing in Mikael Bridges, the Knicks have brought in the ultimate wild card star in Carl Anthony Towns. Because at his best, Cat has played like a star, but at his worst, he has played badly enough to cost his team a playoff series, which means the biggest question we have to be asking is what version of Cat is New York going to get? The Knicks, of course, believe they're going to get Cat at his best. They think he fills the need at center they have after the departure of Isaiah Hardenstein, and while Cat has gotten a lot of criticism over his career for being too soft, who can forget this infamous picture of him and DeMarcus Cousins, regardless of his past, we just saw Cat lock in against Nicole. Jokic and battle him successfully, at least successfully enough, as in the second round of the Western Conference playoffs, the Wolves did beat the NBA's defending champions, and Cat battling and giving it his absolute all was one of the major reasons why. If we're looking at Cat's absolute upside here, I also think we have to mention, before he began to share the court with Rudy Gobert, from 2019 to 2022, Carl Anthony Towns averaged nearly 25 points per game and should, at this point in time, be in his absolute prime. We have to remember that there has not been a single NBA champion with one all-star type talent since the 2011 Dallas Mavericks. Every other champion we have had since then has had at least two all-stars or more, and it's easy to forget that at one point in time, Cat was seen as a generational talent. I know those words are big, but back in 2016, ESPN made the argument that Cat was the best prospect since LeBron James. And then in 2018, at the age of 22, Cat was third team all NBA. Knicks coach Tom Thibodeau also coached Cat in Minnesota from 2017 to 2019. So you would think at this point, Tibbs knows what he's getting and this trade is an A+. The problem is the last time Tibbs coached Cat, things started fine and slowly became an absolute disaster. But guys, before we continue, I'm very excited to say that DraftKings is sponsoring today's video. You are going to want to listen right now because I have partnered with DraftKings and they have a deal that is perfect for game day. And right now, customers who bet $5 will instantly get $200 in bonus bets. That's right, $200 in bonus bets. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use my promo code Corzemba. Bet just $5 and you will instantly get $200 in bonus bets. Stay in on the action and use your $250 to bet on any time touchdowns. DraftKings is the place to bet on touchdowns and if sports betting is still not available in your state, you can still join in on all the fun on DraftKings Daily Fantasy where you have a shot to win cash prizes. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers, use my promo code Corzemba and bet just $5 on any wager and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code Corzemba only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Thank you to DraftKings for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get back into that video. As if we remember, it was Tibbs who was coaching when Jimmy Butler infamously came to practice and during a scrimmage grabbed all bench players, challenged the starters, and proceeded to dominate them while screaming at the GM, y'all better mother pay me. I'm like that. Y'all think that team can win without me? I'm him, 
pay me, pay me. An absolutely absurd situation. And while at the time it was thought that Jimmy personally had a problem with Andrew Wiggins, it later came out that it was Kat's work ethic he was questioning. It was Kat's toughness he was mocking, and it was Kat who he personally guarded in the scrimmage where Jimmy slightly lost his mind. Tom Thibodeau knows all of this though. He must have a solid reason for why he believes that Kat will fit into this current system and why he believes that Kat will be able to keep up defensively. I have to say though, the more that we look at this, the more massive questions we find no matter how we slice this. Carl Anthony Towns has not had the reputation of a player who handles pressure well, and the bright lights of New York City are notorious for being harder to play under, as the media can be seen as ruthless. Just being fair here, Cat struggled in a playoff atmosphere in Minnesota. It is troubling that in his playoff career, Cat has averaged just 18.8 points on 46.8 percent shooting, which is down from 22.9 points and 52.4 percent shooting in the regular season. You of course want your stars to step up in the playoffs, not take a clear step back. To be fair, somehow Julius Randle has been worse in the playoffs than Cat has, but Dante DiVincenzo was just a massive contributor for the Knicks playoff run, so this trade is a huge risk for the Knicks. Most trades though do not have the actual potential to swing a championship. Most trades do not involve two different all-stars changing places. With the Knicks, we do know a few things at this point. President of Basketball Operations Leon Rose has made several great moves in the last few seasons. He has built the Knicks from a laughing stock to a team that has made the second round of the playoffs in the last two seasons. Rose has shown he has had good decision making, and clearly he thinks that Cat's versatility at center and his offensive abilities on the court are going to make up for any deficiencies he has. So to me, best case scenario here we can easily see the Knicks take the next step and battle the Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals. Both Bridges and Towns give New York a very different lineup, but in my opinion, one with a much higher overall upside. Although I still would take Boston in a series if everyone is healthy. Especially because one of the biggest concerns of this trade is that the Knicks are giving up Dante DiVincenzo in return. Looking at Minnesota's side, there is no denying that Dante DiVincenzo was a breakout playoff star for the Knicks last season, averaging 17.8 points per game in their playoff run while finishing the year with 39 points in New York's final game. Dante is the best part of this trade for Minnesota as his contract is amazing. He will make around just $12 million in 2027. The problem is, personally, I just don't think Julius Randle fits in with the Minnesota Timberwolves at all. Julius Randle's biggest problem with the New York Knicks is that he has not been able to consistently stretch the floor as a power forward who really does not have the rim protection to play center. The Knicks solved that problem by sending Randall to the Timberwolves and getting back Carl Anthony Towns, but now the Timberwolves have taken on that problem. Last season, Cat connected on 2.23s a game on 41.6% shooting from three, while Randall made 1.73s on 31.1% shooting. A significant difference, and in the modern NBA, shooting 31% from three is just not going to cut it. On top of this, Randall has been one of the most unreliable players in the NBA as he has suffered injury after injury in recent years and so for Minnesota I have to question what were they possibly thinking I am extremely confused by this one to put it lightly the story we are hearing is that Minnesota needed to clear up cap space eventually with the upcoming extension of players such as Nas Reed but are the Wolves really locking in this core with Anthony Edwards we just watched Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert failed to succeed together in Utah. On paper, with an offensive guard, Rudy Gobert seems to make sense as a fit. A seven foot one defensive player of the year, why doesn't it work? Because in the playoffs, time and time again, Gobert has failed to deliver to the point where teams have targeted him. Regular season, Gobert has been great defensively. In the postseason, when teams have advanced offensive game plans going, he's been awful, simple as that. And looking at the Minnesota Timberwolves roster makeup, the the combination of Cat and Gobert was already shaky with Cat spreading the floor shooting 41% from three. Now with Randall being a liability from deep, Anthony Edwards is going to get less floor spacing and we have seen teams overreact and make big moves such as this one after getting embarrassed in one single playoff series before. Is that what is happening? Is Minnesota overreacting after losing it in five games to Dallas? I think so. In my opinion, the best option here was just to run it back at least until you could get some better 
better value for Cat. Anthony Edwards last year during that playoff run to the Western Conference Finals was just in his fourth season. This core was finally clicking together and they were also following the classic blueprint. Make a deep run with a young playoff star, lose, learn, come back, take those lessons with you and win. Except Minnesota really just took a massive risk here. If this trade does not work out, Minnesota is going to be rocking the boat with Anthony Edwards. The reality of the NBA we live in is that a star of Anthony Edwards caliber is really in control of his own career. At least to the point of if he demands a trade, he's going to get it. Ant is one of the most competitive players in the league and he just got a taste of the Western Conference Finals last year. The last thing Ant is going to want to do is go backwards and if this team does, Ant is going to have one pivotal move to look back on. A move where Minnesota gave up their franchise star without a blink of an eye. Just an interesting thought. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you never miss a video again. And if you are still here, I think you are going to really like this video in the top left on Caitlin Clark or this video in the top right that YouTube has specifically chosen for you. Thank you for watching. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that music.